Hi everybody, welcome to my channel. In today's video, you're going to watch me use an envelope punch board for the very first time. And at the end, I'm going to share 10 tips of things I learned. So excited. I just got the Build Your Stash box for June from ninniesnapkins.com. And in that, I got an envelope punch board from We Are Memory Keepers. A couple 8x8 Stamperia pads and some tape along with assorted other things. Now, this is what I'm excited about. Now, I admit that I would probably not have purchased this on my own. But now that I have it, I'm going to put it through the paces in this video. So in the container, you get the punch board with the bone folder that stores handily on the side. You get the instructions, which are also on here. The measurements on this part are in inches, but they give you a centimeter chart and a sticky that you can put on here if you want the centimeter measurements. Why would you need an envelope punch board? Well, if you don't want to buy cards, you're going to cut cards out of watercolor paper or mixed media paper or card stock, that may be cheaper but then you don't have the envelopes that go with. So this allows you to make the companion envelope for whatever you're making. It also allows you to customize for odd shapes and whatever mixed media products you might make. And I'm gonna showcase some of those. You will be able to make envelopes for some of your craft fair makes. So let's get started. Now on here, they have a lot of the measurements and the work done for you to making envelopes. So if you want a card, the first column here says what size your card is. So I often want to make six by six cards. So I would need a sheet of paper that's nine and a half by nine and a half and four and three quarters is the measurement that I'm going to need for here. So what I want to do is I am going to just, for the first purpose, for the first one, make it using an 8 by 8 sheet. So here we have an 8 by 8 sheet. That's going to make an envelope for a card that is 3 and a half by 6. And this is the measurement that I'm going to need to align up here. Be sure to stay till the end of the video because I'm going to recap what I learned during my first envelope making session with the punch board, and I'm gonna give you 10 tips for success. So this is my eight by eight sheet. So I'm going to line it up at the top level. Let's zoom in a little bit. And I want to look for three and one eighth. Here, once I line that up, I'm going to punch. I'm also going to take my bone folder that's stored here, line it up, and score. You don't want to press too hard, and you want to start, I find, in here. Line it up and go that way. Now, this is, you do not need this marking at all anymore. So you're going to rotate this and where you have the score, you want to, and I'm going to mark that darker for the purpose of the video. This pointer you want to line up 
with your score. And I'm just making a black line just to make it easier. So I'm lining that up. Once that's lined up, I'm going to punch and score. Then I'm going to turn it. And depending on your paper, line this up. You may want to mark it if you can. Make sure it's flat. Punch. Score. Turn. Line it up with the score thing. Punch, score. Now I'm just going to take and fold it on the score line, just using my bone folder. And you can decide which side you want on the outside if you've got double sided paper. Love, love, love that. Ooh. Now I may want this rounded. Now this has a rounding feature up here. So I can just go around. This is optional. Fold it, and there is your envelope. And this is gonna. This is six and a half by almost four. Now you can use whatever adhesive you want. I wanted to buy some glue dots, but you can do this. And again, I'm being awkward because this is the first time I've done it, right? Peel that off. Press it down. And press it down. And there is my envelope. Now I can use this for whatever Again, this envelope with the eight by eight paper fits a three and a half by six inch, or this will fit this tag. So if I want to decorate this tag and mail it out to someone, I can do that. And the bone folder, nicely stored here, so you're not losing it. If this is small, you can go online and look for something that's darker or once you use this and you know you have your usual ones that you do write that on a piece of card so that you can see it and refer to it often and I would just even you know attach it somehow to this but here is a, another workaround you can go to Pinterest and search envelope punch board calculator. This comes up, crafty envelope punch board calculator. Now there is one, there is an app that you can actually buy. I have not used that, but I can go here. Go to that site 
and you get this calculator on somebody's blog. Thank you very much. This is Now you can change this from inches to centimeters to millimeters or whatever you want. Then you put your card dimension. So I want to make something for a six by six card. I love working on that square size. I have lots of mixed media paper that I've cut to that size. The only thing missing was the envelope. Now it says paper size, I need to cut to five and five eighths inches square. And my score line would be four and three quarters. So I'm just going to write that down on here. So for a six by six, paper size is nine and five eighths. And my marking for scoring is four and three quarters. So this is nine and five eighths inch square that I cut from 12 by 12 scrapbooking paper. This one's fairly thin. You can use the Stamperia. So let's use the punch board. We need the score mark four and three quarters. That's written down here, or you can use the calculator. So it's four and three quarters. And I'm gonna put a dot there because this is a size that I'm going to make often. I've also put a dot here. And you know, once I get going, I'm sure. So I'm going to line this up four and three quarters. Make sure it's flush. Let's get out our, and we are going to punch. Forget about this now. That's the last time we use it, but we are going to score. The first time I scored, I pressed too hard, I cut the paper. So now we're going to rotate it. I'm just gonna make sure I can see that. Line this up with the score. Make sure it's flush across the top. Punch. Score, rotate, line up, flush, flush, punch, score. So if I was making lots of these, I would do this in assembly line. So I know the, know the markings, know, know it all. Line it up, make sure it's flush, and score. And it makes a nice thing here. So what I'm going to do now, I'm gonna corner punch. That's so handy to have right here. Now we can Put this away and we're ready to assemble. Whoop. For my six by six card. Now this one is not double sided. I'm gonna put some tape on here, or you can just use glue. You do not need to do anything too fancy. I almost would prefer this. This is so much easier. And there, and there is your envelope for six by six. So there's your envelope. Here is a card that I recently made. This one is just on mixed media paper. These are the cards from, um, this is a little bit thicker paper. 
at six by six. Totally fits, close it up. If you wanna put a mailing tag, I would just print it out onto white if you're using colored paper or pattern paper. And there you have. Around at things that I may want to mail out to people. And I make a lot of four by four magnets. This is using a coaster to make a magnet or journal cards. Could be just a greeting card like that. But these basically measure four by four. Now the magnets and that have a little bit of dimension. So we're gonna see how much wiggle room we can get in there. So I punched it into the calculator on here, but it is on here as well. Four by four, the paper size, I cut to five, six and three quarters, and I need three and three eighths up here. I'm unfamiliar, I'm not a card maker, so three eighths, three sixteenths, four, all of that is a little bit, um, it takes me some time to think, so just, as you do more of it, you're going to learn and, and figure it out. So six and three eighths, or three and three eighths, punch and turn, ignore. Line up, ignore that, punch, oops, score. You don't have to put a lot of pressure. Line up the score line with this. Punch. Turn, line up. Once you get in the rhythm of this, it, it becomes very, very simple. Corner. Decide which one you like the best. I'm curious to see. You don't want glue on here. So you could put this in while you put the glue on so you do not get it where you don't want it. And, yeah. And there is your four your envelope for a four by four. So, just a journal card fits perfectly. So this does not fit. This is a little bit too bulky to fit the magnet in. So I decided I'm gonna make a envelope or a card, I'm gonna say it's four and a half by four and a half to allow for the thickness. So I need a seven and a half piece of paper square, and I'm gonna score on the three and three quarter line. Now, this is regular copy paper that I have a gel print on. And I want to put this in, so I kind of coordinated it. So I'm gonna cut this to seven and a half by seven and a half. Okay, so seven and a half paper square, three and three quarters for here. Punch. So again, this is just copy paper that I have done a gel print on. I wanna see if that works. Ignore this.
You don't have to fold it up at that time. I am simply doing that so I can see where it is. Corner. this. Whoops. And there we have beautiful gel print. And let's see, does it fit? Absolutely. There we go. There's a little bit of extra room, but it fits. So for a four by four magnet, to give it a little bit because of the thickness, seven and a half by three and three quarters. ATCs that are a little dimensional. And by the time I put modeling paste on it, they're a little thicker. So, you know, if this is a little tight, You can just add, so instead of five and three quarters, all I've done here is this. I left this the same. So, well, I left that the same, two and three eighths, and you know what, it worked. So it's a little bit of trial and error. You could just use plain copy paper and get the right size, and once you have it, write it down, and then you have it. So we're gonna turn, but you see with the plain paper, you can really easily line this up. Punch, score, turn. And so even in the time of the video where I've made a few I've gotten a lot better. So I can decide which one I want. Corner round. It's very forgiving. So I found this, you know, unless you want to hold it for a long time. Easy peasy. This one has a lot of dimension to it, fits in perfectly. As promised, I'm going to share with you what I learned in my first envelope stash builder session. Number one, and especially if you're a newbie, Start with plain paper or turn it to the side of the paper that is white when you are making the marks and trying to line up. It'll just make life easier. And as you're learning the process and getting comfortable with the process, we just can eliminate any more difficulty. Number two, in the video, I 
thought that using a glue stick would be easier. I was wrong. I recommend using some kind of tape. That's number two. Now the fold order matters. I didn't think that it did, but in, you, if, in these, here the bottom one is the last one. Here I put the side up. When I looked at it, I decided that I like this way better. It's neater. So fold in the sides, then the bottom, and then use the tape runner to make your envelope. Number four, use the calculator that I found on Pinterest. You can search for envelope punch board calculator or go to the blog, I'm just loving it, for the crafty envelope punch board calculator. This way you can customize whatever. You can change your card dimension and then these arrows can go up or down and just makes it so, so, so much easier. Once you've figured it out, that brings me to... So in the video, you watched me customize the envelope for ATCs that had dimension, for mixed media six by six board. I also made an envelope for my mini composition books. That's right here. Now, when you are experimenting and trying to find what the measurement is, you can go on the closest one here and start playing with the numbers. You can punch it into the calculator as much as possible, or you can guesstimate. Instead of you doing it on the paper that you want, do your experimenting on copy paper, recycled or otherwise. That allows you to tweak it. If it doesn't go right, you throw it out, start over, and you haven't really wasted anything. In fact, you've used stuff maybe that was in the recycle bin. Number six, once you have the things that you are going to make on a regular basis, or you figured out some specifics for some something that you make, like the composition book, write the measurements down. So a six by six card, five and or nine and five eighths, four and three quarters. But a six by six on a mixed media board is 10 inches by 10 inches, and the score line is five. The mini composition book, seven and one eighth square, and the score line is three and seven eighths. Number seven, I'm a very big advocate of having stash builder sessions and using the assembly line process. So if I was making envelopes for ATCs or gift cards, I would cut all the paper to the size that I wanna make, punch and score it, fold and assemble, and then I have them in the stash. Number eight, make use of what's in your stash, either loved or unloved. You may have scrapbook pads, scrapbook papers, cardstock of various sizes. Use that. This is what I made use to make these little envelopes. And I love them as this. And I'm going to take this whole thing. This was another thing that came in one of the VIP boxes from Ninny's Napkins. Here's another one. So I'm going to use them up. I'm not going to store them. I'm going to turn them into envelopes that I can use for a variety of places where you can use the thicker cards or a thicker scrapbook paper. I've got some thin scrapbook paper. You might come across some scrapbook papers 
at the thrift store. You can buy that and then turn them all into envelopes. Now you're not just limited to scrapbook paper or cardstock or things that you buy. You can use, and you've seen me use, gel prints that we've created. When there you have that layer or several layers of acrylic paint on there, it thickens up the paper, it stabilizes it, makes it a, into a better material for an envelope. You can use master boards or other collage papers that you have. Turn them into an envelope. Use what's in your stash. Don't just store your stash. All of these were made using gel prints that I have in my stash. You can go through, match it to what you're putting into the envelope. Here's a mini composition book. I've matched the colors. This one, this was a gel print done on tag board or on cover stock. It's a little bit thicker, worked like a charm. In this one, I put a tag. Here I put that four by four magnet into a lovely gel print envelope. Make envelopes out of things that you get by reclaiming the recycling. The brown paper from Amazon packages or shipping, magazine pages, copy paper that's already been printed on one or both sides, old fi manila file folders, paper bags, book paper. You can turn all of those things into envelopes that you can use for a variety of purposes, be it in a junk journal or number 10, make envelopes to store your ephemera in, to sort and organize it. Here I've just done this on a piece of recycled copy paper. I'm labeling it Tim Holtz ephemera and then this is going into my bin of ephemera but I know it's all together. So use what's out of recycling to help store and organize your stash.